With this method, you can get amazing data tables and graphs full of invaluable insights from your Google Search Console data, like with this table with average position and click-through rate on all of your keywords, because it's notoriously hard to get data out of your Search Console and into like your spreadsheets or uh, data tables or graphs. And digging into Search Console itself only gives you part of the data. So let's change that. Okay, so Looker Studio used to be called Google Data Studio and it's awesome and free. And you can create these cool dashboards using your own data. And the great thing is it integrates really easily into your other Google data sources like Search Console, Google Ads, and of course, Google Analytics. And I'll show you how to get my dashboard with all of these uh, graphs and data tables a little later in the video. But first, let's look on how you can create your own dashboard. You can click on edit here or create a new report when you're in Looker Studio on the homepage. And you can click here to add your own data. Now there are a few connectors that you can easily use like Google Analytics, but also Google Ads and Search Console, of course. You can click on that. And because I'm logged in here in the Google account with which I have access to my Google Search Console and Google Analytics data, I can choose between my sites here and then connect it very easily. Now, when you've connected your first data source, you can create little metrics here from the data and you can customize this any way you want or make some graphs and like a nice looking graph that follows the average positions in a line chart across the timeline. Now, the good thing to know is that this uses the Google Search Console API and there are two data views in Search Console. One is the overall view of your entire site, so all of your queries and impressions and clicks, so that's over here. So it clicks, impressions, uh, the position that you're in, the click-through rate, and a few labels like the country. So you can also filter on country or look at the metrics based on country, the queries, and on which device. And the other one is you can look at your data from a landing page perspective and look at each landing page, which queries that page ranks for, and also their average position, impressions, URL clicks, and URL click-through rate. So these are all the Search Console metrics that you can use to build up your dashboard. Now in my dashboard, and you can get the template to this, so you can easily connect your own data. There are two data selectors here, one for Google Analytics. So let's look at my report here and one for Google Search Console. And you can select one of the sites that you're working on for yourself or for one of your clients maybe. So this gives me my total impressions. And you can even select a date range here. I'm looking at the last 30 days, but you can look also look at the last year. And this is the change compared to the previous period. So now I'm looking at 30 days compared to the previous 30 days, or you can even compare one year compared to the whole previous one year. And this is the total traffic that is from Google Analytics 4. And you can see a nice growth line for the site I'm working on here. And a little further down, this is where the Search Console data starts. So I've made a graph to follow the average search position for the top keywords. So you can look at how they develop over a timeline. Um, but the coolest thing here is that you create a data table in which you can easily see all of the keywords that your site is ranking for. So I can see the query I'm ranking for, the impressions it gets, and also the difference between the previous period, the amount of click it gets and the difference, the click through rate and the average position. So two ways I use this dashboard. Uh, use this data table is to look at keywords I'm ranking for pretty highly, but I have a low click through rate. That means I probably should test some title ideas and see if I can improve that click through rate because I'm already ranking in the first three positions, for example, or I can look at the average position here and look at keywords that are some low fruit ranking on the bottom of page one or the top of page two, then make some improvements on those pages, make sure I can rank a little better for them. Now, a great way of extracting your data like this is that you can also add some filters here. I have a filter on the type of query. So I might look at all of the keywords I'm ranking for, for that contain the word skimboard in there. And then I have a complete list of all of the keywords that contain skimboard and their positions and click-through rates. And the other cool thing here is I can look at a particular landing page and then look at queries that page ranks for and also their impressions and clicks and click-through rates. So let's select a particular page over here. 
So now I can see all of the keywords that this particular page ranks for. So I always look at this data table whenever I'm improving an existing article. So I can see what queries the page is ranking for, but maybe not high enough. And then I can create a little bit of extra content around that particular keyword. So I can make sure the page is optimized for that as well. Now, another way I use this, let's look at all of the pages again and then look at a particular keyword that I'm trying to optimize for like skimboard size chart. Look at only that keyword. And then I can look at all of the pages that rank for that keyword, all of my pages, because some pages might pop up now and then like the Zep Skimboards review here. And there's like a, what are Skimboards made of a flatland Skimboard guide that rank for that keyword on and off. And sometimes you'll even see a page completely dropping off here and then another page starting to rank for that keyword and then they switch up again. Now that's a clear sign that Google doesn't understand which of your pages is targeting that specific keyword. So I'll definitely go and add an internal link from the page that starts to show up in the SERP for that keyword, like here on the Flatland Skimboarding Guide, for example, make an internal link to the article I actually want to rank for this, like the ultimate sizing chart. So that way Google can better understand which page I'm trying to rank for that keyword. And another cool thing here is I can take like a bunch of keywords or all of my keywords and look at the impressions, URL clicks and click through rates over time and see how I'm actually performing here for maybe sections of my site or my entire site. Now you can get this template for me for free. I'll add a link in the description here below. You can click over to the dashboard and then punch in your own data with the two selectors right at the top here. And I hope you took some value out of this video and thanks so much for watching.